Welcome. Thank you for inviting us to the ninth International Conference on Environmental, Cultural, Economic, and Social Sustainability. My colleagues and I are thrilled to be um, presenting virtually to the International Conference Center at Hiroshima, Japan on January 23rd, 2013. I am Gloria McNamara. I am the principal investigator for this research study. My colleagues um, include Dr. Leslie Rennes and Dr. Cynthia Wiseman, and we will be presenting the findings from our research here today. Cynthia, would you like to introduce some background information? Thank you, uh, Dr. McNamara. Uh, sustainability, as most of you know, uh, was defined by the Brentland Commission in 1987 as meeting the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Uh, of course, there's a concern, and a growing concern, increasing concern every year uh, that the pattern of current human environment interactions presents an unsustainable picture. Uh, this is happening all around us. We have uh, natural disasters that are occurring. Recently uh, in New York there was Hurricane Sandy, which uh, resulted in a great deal of destruction. So this is on the minds of uh, many, many uh, of us today. The role of colleges and universities in, in, in this challenge to uh, establish sustainable practices is, is critical. Um, Colleges and universities, institutions of higher learning, serve as the primary vehicle for transferring environmental knowledge and motivating behavior change in the future generation. In our own college, um, uh, the college in which this study has taken place, um, many sustainability initiatives have been um, launched. Uh, we've distributed uh, containers for recycling. Uh, Two-sided uh, print default and um, uh, is one of the practices that has um, been instituted for um, waste reduction. Motion sensors, power down mode on all computers and printers has been um, installed and uh, to <coughs> for energy conservation uh, to reduce uh, water consumption. Um, we had two setting flush mechanisms and air dryers to replace paper towels have been installed for um, construction. Uh, we uh, are in the process of uh, an ener energy reduction. We are in the process of uh, installing solar panels. Uh, the new construction of a building is LED certified. We have future plans for green roof uh, and um, in as far as nutrition and health, uh, the menu now includes healthy food items and we have um, seen the installation of vending machines with healthy items. We have the installation of new bike racks to encourage people to use um, uh, bikes to come to uh, the college by bikes and procurement is always an issue. We are seeking more green vendors. So the college at which uh, this uh, study has taken place is taking initiatives to uh, meet the challenge of establishing more sustainable practices and also uh, influencing our um, the future generation. So with all these initiatives, what we realize is that although we have uh, pockets <coughs> of student involvement with the initiatives, we really were um, clueless about what our student bodies felt about these initiatives and also what personally they were doing in terms of sustainability. So the purposes of our study were um, first to uh, examine the personal sustainability of our practices of our students. So we wanted to know uh, what are they doing? Are they recycling? Are they uh, turning lights off when they leave rooms? Are they um, buying local food? So we wanted to find out what their actual sustainable practices were. We also wanted to understand and examine their level of concern they had for uh, sustainable issues. Um, we wanted to know, is this even on their radar screen? Are they thinking about these issues? And is it something that they are not only concerned about, but concerned about and willing to change their behaviors and practices around? We also wanted to examine the level of satisfaction that our students had with the college environment. So given that we are uh, initiating these activities, are they actually satisfied with what we are trying to do to be a more sustainable environment. 
we wanted to know if they were aware of our practices, what we are doing in order to actually make this a more sustainable practice and, envir and environment. And we wanted to uh, really understand the level of satisfaction with the manner in which administration has integrated sustainability into the college experience. So were our st students um, happy with the way that we are trying to make this a sustainable environment? And really what we would like to do is really inform the planning of future initiatives and also the, um, the development of curricula around sustainability. <coughs> Okay, so um, the, this study was grounded in uh, social cognitive theory. Um, as Albert Fender poses, personal cognitions as well as environment influence behavior. By personal cognitions, um, we refer to attitudes, beliefs, values, knowledge, and environment, we refer to the physical environment but also the social environment. What are their teachers, their administrators, their um, peers doing influence behavior as well? This study um, invited 200 student volunteers. 181 um, completed the survey. The survey was 50, had 50 questions, the Sustainable Living Survey. It was anonymous. Um, and once collected, the data was analyzed and basically frequencies, correlational analysis, and regression analysis was performed. The results from their personal practices, the students' personal practices, showed that um, many of the behaviors thought to be sustainable were only enacted sometimes. So basically, they performed sustainable practices uh, inconsistently. So those would be the top um, practices highlighted in red, and that's um, examples of that would be loading your um, washer appliances with full, full loads instead of just partial loads, weather stripping windows, um, things of that nature. Additionally, there were other practices that they enacted um, one third enacted sometimes, another third enacted um, often, and then another third enacted always. And that refers to the ones where um, they used um, compact fluorescent bulbs. So I think that because there were more responses that included often and always, those practices may appear to be easier to implement. The bottom section where it's highlighted in red, the response being always, um, that refers to the practice of taking mass transit or biking to um, work or school. And that does reflect sustainable behavior, but it may also be um, a result of our lifestyle. It is an urban campus. Uh, mass transit is really the quickest way to get to campus. So it may reflect um, convenience rather than rushing to judgment and saying that this is their commitment to sustainability. Um, <clears throat> so there are some um, alternative reasons for these behaviors that need to be looked into. And the last practice of doing car maintenance, the majority of responses were uh, that never. And that might not mean that they are not committed to sustainability it might mean they don't have cars. So, um, you know, as with all research, you have to analyze and probe a bit further. It was pretty unanimous, though, when, when the questions raised about, are you concerned about sustainable issues such as pollution, energy conservation, water conservation, waste management, um, that the majority of students, more than a third, uh, ranked those issues as very important. Um, and when we look and we see that in red, the line uh, that um, reflects their level of concern being number seven, very important for 
water conservation, energy conservation, and waste management. When we line it up with the ranking of the frequency of enacting water conservation behaviors or energy conservation behaviors or waste management behaviors, we see that there's a big gap between them. When we did correlation, the correlations for uh, between concerns and practices, um, in most cases the R was less than or equal to 300 and um, that was statistically significant and it's a weak correlation. So you can interpret that to mean that they are not acting on their concerns. And so universities are faced with this problem how or this challenge how do we get students to act on their concern as far as satisfaction with the um, indoor environment at the school campus most students were more than satisfied with the temperature the noise control the um, lighting the cleanliness and when asked have you noticed have you recognized the um, practices or the policies or the initiatives that the college itself has implemented. Again, um, students were aware, they did notice, they did recognize these efforts. So can awareness predict satisfaction? Can it explain satisfaction? And when we did linear um, regression analysis, the results showed that yes, that Students being aware or taking notice of sustainable, sustainable practices, um, landscaping and green purchasing in particular, that recognition um, could explain the satisfaction that students had with the number of um, courses that have sustainability issues built into their curriculum and the number of sustainability events that clubs put on. And, um, and so this is encouraging so that colleges can realize that they do influence students' beliefs and attitudes and values and they should continue to implement these practices and serve basically as a model and um, as a motivator and also uh, basically correct, um, constructing social norms for the student body so that um, these practices will become commonplace and habit. So getting back to the theory, cognitions and environment influence behavior. When we look at these the, uh, cognitions that the results of the stu study show, yes, students are concerned. Yes, students are aware of the importance of sustainability. And yes, they did notice the institution's efforts. They also are satisfied with the results of the campus efforts. When we look at students' behaviors, um, their personal sustainability behaviors that they practice at home often are inconsistent with the majority of responders saying sometimes. And so why is it so inconsistent? Maybe they're aware, they know it's important, but they don't know how to do it. So maybe they're lacking the method, um, the how-to information. Or maybe um, they do not have access to eco-friendly vendors in their neighborhoods. Or maybe their buildings are not eco-friendly. Um, often they live uh, not independently because they are commuters and they live with their guardians or, or parents and have less control over the um, conditions in their apartment. Or is it lack of motivation? Or is it inconvenient? So basically colleges can look at these questions and try to address some of these um, by promoting commitment um, and by informing on methods and techniques, and maybe even removing some of the barriers to um, this access to green vendors. Okay, so the educational implications, I've actually spoken a little bit um, about already in that sustainability can be built into the curriculums across all disciplines. Um, again, to focus more on methodical knowledge and um, as far as environment, this study basically um, validates that institutions do have a role in modeling these practices 
and that they create a, a sense of legitimacy for sustainability practices. Suchman has done research on legitimacy and has described it as the actions of an entity, such as colleges and universities, um, make desirable and proper the practices and basically construct for the society of the student community uh, a system of norms, values, and beliefs that um, enact sustainable practices because of its importance. So I'll close here with um, some pictures of the initiatives that VMCC, Barrow Open Mountain Community College, again an urban community college um, where almost one third of the population is black, one third Hispanic, and one third Caucasian. Um, more than three quarters of the population um, applies for financial assistance just to describe a little bit of the student, student body. At this campus, um, which is an urban campus, so it is difficult to um, uh, plant trees and, and gardens where normally sidewalks appear, but the MCC has uh, made a conscious effort to do so. So you'll see lining the ramp to the, uh, the stairwell to the college are trees. Um, we've made the most of the natural features of our neighborhood, and that is basically the Hudson River. Along, it's, it's adjacent to our college, and um, along the Hudson River is a walk-run path. And in our indoor pool on campus also uses um, windows that maximize natural lighting so that it gives you know, um, a, a more open, more lit environment. Thank you for your attention. Um, my colleagues and I would again like to thank you for allowing us to present this, these findings. If you want more information about this study, you can contact myself, Dr. Gloria McNamara, at BMCC. The address is on um, the presentation. And um, you can also contact me through email. Thank you.